That is really not cool. Yeah, g'day and welcome to this old lathe channel. Now I've been working on restoring this beautiful Schaubler 125 CNC lathe. In this episode was supposed to be a tour de force of uh, servo tuning, but unfortunately while I was doing a little bit of wiring, one of my drives got into the cigarettes. <laughs> Shit. How did it happen? Well, I wasn't sure exactly how long the power lead for the lathe should be, so I just connected it up to both ends of a 50 meter coil. But then I needed a piece of wire, so I took the plug off it. And while I was at it, I figured I'd move the socket for the Schaublin over to here. So I wired up the Schaublin socket, and it was late in the evening when I put this plug on. And of course, because I'd done this one first and I was looking from the back, when I did this, I connected the mirror image of pins, switching neutral and a phase. So two of the phases got 400 volts instead of 240. The spindle VFD was unpowered because of its relay. The brains of these two drivers sit on one phase each, and this is the one that got 400 volts. Yeah, didn't like it, started smoking. Yep, just yet another careless mistake. Putting the plug on was the last thing I did in the evening. I didn't think to go through and check it with the multimeter before I plugged it in, and bang. Well, there's no doubt at all, I've definitely blown a capacitor in here. Let's see what other, what damage we've got. Well, I'm pretty sure that opening this up is gonna avoid the warranty. Blowing it up with 400 volts, probably already did. I can see straight away, that one's not looking very healthy. So when we pull it apart, let's hope that's the only issue. So what's still holding it down? Oh, okay, these two, those three standoffs are probably also holding it down. It's a very firmly held down board, a lot of fasteners. Okay, so we've got heat transfer goo on, that's probably a bridge rectifier, and then two more ICs. And up here, these, this is the capacitor which I exploded. I hope the electronic store has a replacement capacitor. Now I was off traveling for work this week, when I got this message from Constantine, a fellow Schaublin owner. Liège, Belgium? Hey, that's where I am right now. So after work, I went to visit him. Now I know how Patrick Dempsey feels when he meets a real surgeon, because I sometimes play a machinist on YouTube, but Constantine's the real deal. A tool and die maker, with a whole career of experience. And an amazing shop with like four or five CNC machines, a couple of manual machines, grinding equipment, a lot of precision inspection equipment. This is the best garage ever, huh? <laughs> wow. Unfortunately, because I wasn't expecting it, I didn't take a decent camera or any audio recording gear with me, so I've only got footage from the phone. Oh wow, so here we have the 125. Looks like we're going to have to do a little bit of polishing on this uh, nameplate here. We got a bit of bit of paint stuck on that. So this has also been lobotomized, but it's got a professional controller on it, a NUM. What age is the controller? It's about uh, 10 years old, but it's new. Is this, in your opinion, the best possible height and distance forward? Is this, you know, is there anything you would change about the physical location of the of your control? Not really. My plan was to put a, a head unit, very mm. similar sort of what you've done. I like how you've brought it forward because I was kind of unsure. You know, the original is so deep. Uh, I can uh, key in the, 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 the program yep. and, and see directly. Yep. Because sometimes when the, uh, the, the keyboard is to, you, you have to look down, look up. Yeah, so yeah. Th this, is, uh, this is well presented. And I was, I was kind of wondering whether I click into this cross slide dovetail and drop a 
drop my two hand wheels off here, but I don't think I will no. because then I'd have to run all the wiring. Well, I think I'll just put it here that, that you can slide uh, across it. That's yep. a bit more logical. Yeah, yep. uh, The only thing that we change is to put uh, the manual uh, wheel here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, some start and stop buttons. And okay. Change the, the direction. Here you can slide it across. And yep. Yeah, no, that's... Uh, when, when you're a bit frightened, you can do it from the distance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because some of my ideas are still kind of half-baked, you know, so yeah. it's nice to see someone who's, who's, who's tried them out and can, can give feedback on them. Oh, tool it's changing, good. exactly, yeah. yeah. I have to see that. Because I've never actually seen one of these tool changers do anything. Oh, that's very cute. I've also got the, the aft tool post. Yeah. And... I'll probably initially just use that on the front to, to be able to get started because I'll have to I'll have to rip all this apart to get it fixed. A special joint, a special seal here. Yeah. That's uh, made by Chaublain. I contacted uh, Chaublain about uh, ten years ago. I changed the seal, but uh, it degraded uh, rather rapidly. Okay. Probably because it was uh, it was made uh, about 40 years ago. Right. So anyway, it degraded rather rapidly. Uh, I paid about 70 euros. Uh, uh, just a, a seal. It was well made, but yeah. uh, I had to go through the agent, and he was asking me for something about uh, 600 euros. Oh wow! Yeah. So, so no, I'm not going to do that. So I took this uh, plate off. Yeah. I turned. Uh, a, a, bigger diameter yep i introduced this ring with a simple o-ring that uh, ah, okay. works on the seal okay i guess we'll see when i get to this point what it look what my one looks like but i don't have great hope for seals uh. after they've been glued <laughs> together for for god knows how many years sextantine's completely cleaned out and replaced everything in the control cabinet Man, that's tidy. Do you still have the pneumatics in it? You've got a kind of a mix. So I got some. Yeah. I see some Festo in there, and ah, oh, I like that one. <laughs> hey, where are my players? <laughs> just for them. Are you still using the original switches? No, I replaced them with uh, magnetic reed switches. Okay. Uh, I've left the magnets there. They work yeah. well. Do you have any end stop switches, or it's just the no, same just three? Like this, yeah. yeah, just that. And start uh, a cycle, it won't go very far. What, um, what rapids did you set it up for? Uh, a little bit higher than the original, uh, this about <laughs> uh, five meters. Oh five yeah, meters, yeah, yeah. That's, I'll probably set mine for like two because I'm just too much of a newbie and I've, yeah. they could try, try and give me at least a few seconds to stop <laughs> pressures. But. Wow. It's very quiet, huh? Won't go very far because uh, right, yeah, there's, needs no to, there's, yeah, yeah. there's no And here we are on the wall with the core memory board out of the Data General Nova. That is a cool piece of decoration. Constantine put that core memory card under his microscope. So there must be like 8,000 ferrites on all of those junctions for the eight kilobits of data. Honestly, have you ever gone through your whole shop and counted how many different collet systems you actually own? This is the engineering tower of Babel, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, every house in the world has got American standard water pipe fittings, but every machinist's got 50 different types of collars. We haven't even started looking at the ERs and the... <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's that? <laughs> That's embarrassing. After using the, chi the Chinese yeah, crap... So I thought, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is the absolute machinist's <laughs> dream shed. Fantastic. So that was a... Fantastic visit. I really appreciated the friendship and hospitality. And Constantine, I hope I can come and visit you on another trip to Liège sometime in the future. Thanks very much. Luckily, the local electronics store 
Had a replacement capacitor. Just need to clean out those holes. That's better. Is this the bit where all of the electronic dudes in the world freak out and tell me you're not supposed to clip off leads after soldering? Maybe. I'll just wash, wash out the rest of the capacitor juice. The other day I ran out of labeling tape. I got a few wires that are just loose and unmarked. That needs to be tidied up. Well, with the blown capacitor, sometimes it booted, but sometimes it aired out. Let's see now. Oh, not good. Hey, check this out. So how's this for Murphy's Law? I ordered a replacement driver. It's going to take about six weeks before it gets here. So I left it for two days, plugged it in again, and it boots normally. Not ready. I release the e-stop, which powers the main power section. I get a ready light. Oh well, I guess I'm going to have a spare driver if this one starts playing up. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time.